everybody. My name is Sherry. Welcome to my stamp studio. Let's see, where do we want to start today? So I'm going to show you a couple of um, samples that I've done from the new catalog in case you've missed them. You can go back and look at my playlist. I have a playlist that's just for this catalog and it will have everything that I've made so far um, with items from it. So here's just a couple of them. Um, this one has some retiring stuff on it. So remember, you have till the end of April to get the items that are leaving and the items that are leaving that are on sale. So those are all while supplies last. Um, here's the last couple that I did. These um, use all of the in colors. So the five new in colors and the beige because over the start of the new catalog from May 1st to May 4th, if you purchase the five new in colors from me, I'm going to send you the basic beige pad for free. Um, so that's one of my catalog kickoff specials. And then this one here, I think this is the last one before this that posted, um, I used the color wheel. And the good news with that is the color wheel will be an item that you can purchase later on this year. They don't have a time frame yet because it wasn't something they intended to do. So, you know, coming up with a whole new product, having it um, manufactured and then sent back and it just takes time. Um, if they had a little genie and could snap their fingers, we could get a little bit quicker. Um, and then this card, I wanted to um, remind you that my Try It class is an online class. If you have never taken it before um, and you want to learn a little bit more about it, as the name implies, you're going to try it with a lot of the new things in here. So we'll do 10 projects together. They'll both have a PDF, a full PDF with measurements, instructions, pictures, as well as a video tutorial for each card. And then you get the nice little book. Um, they're all fun folds or templates and they'll use 10 of the new papers, um, 10 new ribbons, 10 new embellishments, um, punches, dies, folders. So this template here is actually one that we did on a past Try It class, and I redid it. So if you go watch it, you can kind of see it. Um, but I have not closed registration, but I've capped it. So once those spots are taken, then that will fill up. But be done um because we started cutting paper for it and i'm not going to go back and cut a couple more packets <laughs> once we've done that so all of that information is about in about this new catalog it starts may 1st and on may 1st that morning i will have a walkthrough and i'll kind of show you the new layout to the catalog and kind of show you some of the um, fun things that are in there then for today's card i'm going to use there's a suite in there I don't remember now what it's called. It's a mega suite. So it has two 12 by 12 papers, two stamp sets, two die sets, and um, embellishments. I don't remember if it has a ribbon. I don't think so because it has a folder. Um, so there's country flowers, and this is the country flowers, which I have used already. So you can find this tutor tutorial on my channel. But today I'm going to use the country birdhouse, but I'm going to use the same paper. So there's two sets of paper, and I intended to use the woody one. But I really love this paper. And so as I kept laying my design on top of them, I'm like, no, I'm just going to go with the one I love. And then here's the folder, and I'll use that again. So we're using Country Birdhouse. There's the stamps. And then here are the dies that I'm not using. All of the rest of them that are off of this, there's a lot of dies. There are 23 dies. So there's still all these, and then I've taken the ones off that I'm using. So let's have a quick look at the paper. One of the things that we do in Try It class is I show you a full sheet of all of, not well, sometimes 90% of them will be full sheets. Sometimes I don't have a full sheet because we have to cut into a little bit of one um, to make that those final packets. So, and if you join my team or you're a member of my team, you get this class for free. They get all of my video tutorials for free, members of my team. So isn't the paper fun? Um, the colors in it are like pool party, moonlight, smoky slate, basic beige, um, and um, petal pink. I think those are the main colors. So we're gonna kind of use those colors and then we're gonna highlight with some of the new in colors. So I'm going to use our Fluid 100 watercolor paper because I do wanna watercolor this. So I'm going to cut out the birdhouse. There are pieces in it that you can build a birdhouse. Um, and I tried to do both of them, but I have a little bit of a migraine today. So I just went straight up what I love to do, what I love to do is stamp and paint. Um, so I just put all the other pieces back. That's why they're all falling off that thing. I intended to use them all in watercolor pieces and build a birdhouse. That didn't happen. So I actually have a hot thing on my neck right now, but it's feeling a little bit better. 
the studio lights are never great. So I am going to use ah, the Saddle Brown stays on. That will allow me to, one, watercolor. Oh, come on. <laughs> there we go. And number two, the brown will give it a little bit more of a softer look than if I used the stays on in the black. So it does stain your stamps. You can see that that was clean on there, but the ink never comes off. I think maybe over time, or if you use the stays on cleaner, it softens a little bit, but it's the price you pay for having it water uh, waterproof. Let me put this on here, make sure you press good everywhere. And watercolor paper takes a little bit longer to absorb than a regular paper does. So I just like to hold it on here a little bit longer and let that um, paper really soak up the ink. There we go. So there's our house. And then I just took all the other stamps that I wanted, except for the sentiment, and I just put them on the one block. So I put the bird on the end because I only want one bird. So let's ink these up. And this way we'll just be able to stamp them all at one time too. So let's do this here. I'm trying to conserve paper and conserve time. And now look, I've got some um, Saddle Brown on my thumb. I made the whole first card and managed to not get any ink on me and have just started. So now I just want the flowers because I want two sets of the flowers. And I didn't use the big one, this big one. So I also put that next to the bird because now I can just ink up these three here and flip this over here and just get those three. But it saves a little bit of time as opposed to stamping, stamping, stamping um, all of your things. And then the other thing that I'm going to stamp is that over start on the first side of my dirty paper so here i'm going to use compi smoky slate and then this is a four by four piece of the paper from the designer series paper that i just showed you so i'm going to stamp so whoops on here but for this i'm going to use pecan pie um, because if you don't have to use the stays on this will be a very similar look. In fact, I think they could practically rename, and look, I just touched it again. They could rename the Saddle Brown Pecan Pie because they're pretty close to the same color. But this then won't stain my thing, and I'm not gonna watercolor it, so. So, hoping you have the best day ever. That is the stamps. Now let's do a little bit of watercolor. There will be parts of this where I'll kind of make the volume go down. And then that way you can watch, but I can speed it up. Um, so I'm going to start with basic beige. So you want to put your pad in here. I don't have the refills for this yet. And I really wish I had, wish I had the beige. Because I would put the re-anchor in here and not have to use um, this once it's wet. So I have my brush. This is a water painter. I filled it up. I'm going to add some water in here. And for this first coat, I'm going to... Pretty much, I'm going to get this pretty wet. So you can see I've already used up a lot of that beige because this is a big pattern. So I'm going to give almost everything just a quick little soak here, except for the gingerbread part. In fact, as I was doing this, I thought this will be really easy to switch over and make a gingerbread house out of. Um, just kind of take the perch off of and especially with the builders, you could make the house go out a little bit. So I'm getting this nice and wet. All right, so there's a coat of basic beige. I'm gonna take my glasses off. My glasses that I have on today kind of match the, pa the paper scheme. I noticed that earlier when they were laying on the table next to my, my birdhouse. Now I'm going to switch to pecan pie. And again, you're gonna need a lot of the color on this. And then we'll go back in a minute and kind of give a second coat once some of this is soaked into the paper. So we have pecan. Now I'm going to try to keep the pecan like this two-thirds over. This is a really nice stamp to 
kind of play with if you have never done much with watercolor because there's a big area. You don't really have to guess a whole lot with colors because you can make birdhouses. Birdhouses can be painted, right? Any color that you want them to be. So, first I'm going to go in here and I'm going to give this kind of a coat over. And I'm leaving some places intentionally where all of the colors don't mix and match. That way it'll give us a little bit of a more watercolored look as the water kind of spreads around. All right, I'm going to leave that one open because I'm going to go back to these again. Now I'm going to hit get my smoky slate, and I'm not going to clean off my brush because on this one, the first little coat here can have both colors in it. I'm going to just kind of hit these little scallopies here, a little bit more water than that. The nice thing with the water painters and with the water and the watercolor paper is you can really control the amount of color that you get. Right there, so there's our smoky slate. Now I'm gonna go back one more time with the pecan, and then actually when my card was done and it had all the way dried, um, I went back and I added a little bit more pecan to it. Because right now, while there's a lot of water on it, it's harder to get it as dark as I wanted it. So just a little bit more. But you can see it kind of just absorbs into the paper because it's wet. So to get it to kind of stay where I want it, instead of painting it on, I'm gonna kind of blob it here. And then it doesn't smear everywhere. Okay, that looks pretty good. And like I said, once it dries, we'll be able to kind of hit it with a little bit more any place that we want the color to be. Now let's do all of our other the little bird and the flowers. So we'll just kind of start with whichever color. I don't have a wet wipe line here. Like I said, my head doesn't feel great today. So sometimes I um, cut corners. Let's start with the petal pink. This is one of the colors in the paper. So I let this be my base color, kind of the same way that I just did with the beige. So I gave it a good coat of beige and then I added colors over the top. So for this, we are going to give a little coat of petal pink. To most of our flowers, it also gets them wet. So then the other colors that we do choose to use will kind of, they'll move a little bit better. So let's paint most of these in. Okay. 
Okay, so we have a nice little coat of, whoops. And then the other thing I forgot to do, I'm gonna grab some straight off here. So I don't have a lot of water coming out of here. So I'm just gonna pick up some paint or a little bit. I forgot to do this till the very end last time. And so my brush had to be washed off just to get a color that I'd already used, which is never my favorite thing to do. So there we go. Petal Pink's a nice light orange. It's kind of an orange pink. Now let's go to our lightest. So I'm going to use two of the new ink colors, the Petunia Pop and the Pretty in Pink. Pretty in Pink's lighter, so we'll start with it. And then all of the flowers, now I won't do um, all the same. We'll kind of mix. We'll start with this base here. We'll add a little bit of the Pretty in Pink to this flower. Okay, now I'm gonna switch to the Petunia Pop. This is a really bright color and it was really juicy. If your pads are really juicy when you get them and you do this, I've already painted with this a lot of times, but it kind of helps move some of that ink out of the, the top. So first I'm gonna get the kind of the centers of these flowers. And then we'll add a little bit of water here. I wanted that to kind of be stronger. Let me get a little bit more of this really strong color again, although that's kind of wet. I might have to go back and hit it, or we'll just use another color. Okay, now for this, you do need to get this off because we're going to go to a lighter color. It's not really lighter. Peach pie is probably a little bit more stronger of an orange and a brighter orange than I anticipated when I first saw it, but after working with it, It is pretty bright, you can see there. And it's really gonna take a look at my flowers now. They're kind of muted and um, dull, but once we pop this on here, it's gonna really brighten them up. So I'm gonna go through first, again with a strong color, and just add a little bit of color, and then I'm gonna go back and add water. And kind of move it around. But this way I can keep this strong color on there. I'm going to give her a little extra on her beak. So her feet and her beak aren't, beak aren't the same color. Okay, now let's get our bird. I'm gonna start, my base coat's going to be Pool Party. 
which is the color in the paper and why I happen to have um, a blue that's going to start as the base coast because Pool Party is kind of blue, kind of green. So I'm going to give the base coat on my leaves some Pool Party. So over on my leaves, it's going to be green, but then we're also going to use it for a base coat on the bird. And we're going to let it be um, blue over there. And it's going to, from here, it will take on the color of what we add to it. So here we have Pool Party on my leaves. I'll look to be a little bit wetter because the area is bigger. Oh, my bird. And to keep everything so everything doesn't have the color on it, you can see I kind of dab it. So there's the base coat. Now let's go um, Misty Moonlight and we'll put this on our little bird guy. And again, strong color, but my paper's wet. So I'm going to add her little highlight to her wings and her feathers. Or it's got that little bit of water in here still. It will kind of move on its own. So there she looks good. And now I'm going to go to another new in color, Summer Splash, which again can be kind of a green. It tends, it's not really blue, but it's a, if you look at the cal, um, the Shy Shamrock, this is way greener, and then you kind of see the blue tinge that this has to it. So I'm gonna pop this now on my leaves. And then just to give her a little bit of highlights, because you know birds have all those beautiful colors on their feathers. We're just gonna do the tips and a stronger bit. There you go. So that is all of our painting. You wanna make sure when you're finished with a water painter that you brush off the last bit of it, which you know you can squeeze it because it's just water. And now I am going to take the pieces and cut these through. There is a circle here um, that will cut the um, inside of the birdhouse. And then there's another one that will cut the little post that I didn't end up using. I think you would use that more if you did a birdhouse builder, but I wanted to show you it was there. So I'm gonna do those. And then here is the eyelet folder that's part of the suite. And I'm gonna put my smoky slate piece and run this through like that. Okay, I've cut everything out. So I'm gonna go back now and add just a little bit more um, color to this. I'm gonna do a little bit of basic beige and a little bit of pecan pie. So let's do the basic beige first. I remember I used it all up, so I gotta squish it again. Isn't this pretty? I love the eyelet folder. So there we have some beige, which is how much I used the first time when I laid down the coat of it. So one of the tips for water coloring to kind of get that water look is to put more water on your thing. And you can see as it starts to move around that as it soaks in, those areas will have that little bit of a, I don't know, the water shadow around them. But see how that's already over here where I just have a little bit of beige. I wanted to give it a, like a beige on top of beige because it'll still be beige, but just a tad bit darker. Do another drop of water here. It'll take it a second longer to dry, which isn't my favorite when I'm filming. And then I'm gonna give a little bit to the tips of my scallops.
You see where it's picking up like the water there. I don't want that really to happen with the pecan, so I'm doing it all now with the beige. Okay, we're just gonna add a little bit of pecan right here to the edges to kind of darken those up. There we go. It has now a fun watercolor feel to it. Now, I did consider adding some beige to the outlines of my things to kind of vintage them up, but I left them. Didn't want the card to be terribly, to be dark. I want it to be light and airy. So we have our eyelet, and then we have the piece here. So I have to put this down fairly close to the bottom so there's room for my um, birdhouse to go at the top on my other one. I moved the ribbon up a little bit high, and then it was all like, oh, this is really going to fit. So I'm going to use the beige ribbon. I'm going to tie a little bow. And I don't want it to be big, so I'm going to make the loops small and then kind of adjust it as I go. It's pretty good. I'm using Seal Plus for this because <laughs> my daughter and some of my friends came over yesterday and we stamped all day and all of my adhesives got taken downstairs. Not all of them, but most of them. And so this one was what was laying on the table. All of my glue was down there, which I might have used glue. I Actually, it's all been carried back up. I'm just, like I said, headache and I didn't feel like cleaning. So it's all just still over in a stack, but the Seal Plus works. A lot, of toy, a lot of times the um, adhesive that you use is just preference. So we did use, everybody brought a shoebox swap for a card and for a scrapbook page yesterday. And a couple of them, I have a couple of different samples now with these sets in this paper. So I will show you all of the ones I made then because they all stamped differently and they were all so cute. But those will be in my walkthrough of the new catalog. So on my other one, I flipped it this direction because I think you can use it either way. I'm gonna do it this way on this one. In the end, a lot, not a lot of this ends up showing, so I don't think it really matters. So I'm gonna put this on here. I told my daughter yesterday, I'm like, apparently you don't listen to me. And she said, I don't watch your videos, but don't, don't press it because you wanna make sure that this is also on, yep, that'll work. You don't want this to be off the top, otherwise your birdhouse isn't gonna be in your card. Now, here's, I, this pops out this. I'm not quite sure why it has the hole in it, unless it's to do this and kind of build it when you are doing the builder one. But I didn't like the house looking like the hole, like that doesn't look like a birdhouse, it looks like a birdhouse front. So what I did, so I stuck this here, just like this, so you know where to put the little circle. So let's start by putting the circle in. Now I just lost it. <laughs> How can that happen? Is it under there? There we go. Didn't fall out. So put this here. Birdhouse is on. This is straight. this back in and then to make it look like that's kind of the back of the house I'm gonna pop this up with some dimensionals It's 
these are just the edges off the dimensional sheets. So now when you put this on, this is higher. And I want it to go a tad underneath my bow. And again, don't push until you know where it is where you want it. There we go. Now let's put all of our pieces on. Let's start with our bird. have her just kind of standing here not all the way up on the perch but kind of down there start with your largest flowers Let's add those there then our next two largest flowers that one we just have one of the rest of them we all have two so I'm going to do one on each side Sometimes you have to wait um, until this is all the way dry. That's why I'm using Seal Plus as well, because at least it has a better chance of sticking to the wet paper. Now let's grab these little guys. So you see there's a hole in my birdhouse, right? Well, I didn't want the hole. So I took the smallest flower, which is not this one. It's this one here. And I just added a flower to the inside of our house. So it makes the inside of the little bird's house pretty and it also covers up our hole. I didn't do it straight on, I kind of moved it over just so it kind of adds a little effect. So when you're using Seal Plus like this, you can see I'm laying it on here and pressing it on. And then when you pull it, it pulls the little adhesive tab off. Let's do this one here. And then you can see this tiny little guy right here. This is what I used for my post. The little tab's a little bit larger than the circle. That's pretty wet. Oh, this is pretty wet, none of it's sticking. I'm just gonna lay it very carefully on there for now. Then let's put it on the cart. Like I said at the beginning, I'm using pecan pie. And then I'm gonna remember not to tump this when I put it on so that my pieces don't fall off. Once it's all the way dry, I'll just push down on them and then the adhesive, the um, seal plus will stick. As you can see, those are, that's really moving. And it's got a ton of it, it's just, too wet right there. That's where I put all that water. There we go. And then the, the embellishments that come in this suite are silvers and grays. I wanted mine to be a little bit brighter because the card isn't bright. So I went with any color shimmer gems. I love these. So there's a good chance that as my May Thank You gift, these will be included. But I didn't use um, both of the greens when I painted, but I think this looks enough like the pool party that I went ahead and used it on here. So I'm going to use all five colors. I don't have as much petunia pop on this one either as I do on my other card. You know, sometimes when you paint, you just get different amounts of, there's two sizes, so I'm going to use two. And then flip over to these. But you get a different look every time you watercolor, just from the colors that you chose. And so here is my little post. And for this one, I'm going to put, well, that just stuck because again, not dry. Oh. I'm gonna put this, maybe it's big enough. Maybe this will stick. So this is also going to help my post be a post. That is the peach pie, one of these. So again, these will be available in the new catalog. They're not part of this suite. Um, but you can see this brighten them up a little bit, but then it would if I had put the gray in the silver. This one's all the way dry. And this one I used the Seal Plus and you can see everything's on there. Oh, I did put her on with a dimensional. It looks like I did not on this one. It doesn't really matter. So basically the same. This one has a little bit more of the petunia pop, a little bit more pink. This one um, has more peach pie, but your houses will always look the same, but different when you watercolor and you use the same colors like that. So super fun. You're gonna love this mega suite. Um, it really has a, a 
kind of a retro feel. It kind of has an 80s feel to it, 80s, early 90s. Um, it's fun to work with. So I will catch you back here later if you need a catalog or if you want to make sure you know about my specials and my classes, head to my website and join my email list. Have a great one. Bye.